Okay, welcome back to Strength Coach Tutorials. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna continue on developing these ranked um, top 10 reports that we started in the last video. And I'm gonna show you how to create a report where you can select a test that you wanna look at, whether you want it ranked high to low or low to high, and then select the number of athletes that you wanna display from an all-time data set. So for example, you can see here, I have a 40 meter dash ranked low to high and I wanna see the top 25 records all time in order. And if we go over here to the report, you can see that that would be the fastest one all time in this data set, all the way down to 6.51 for athlete 15 on this date. And if we only wanna look at the top five, we can put the number five in there or 10 or 15. This is gonna be a highly customizable report that you can use to display your fitness testing results and get exactly what you want when you want it. So let's get into it. Okay, so as you can see, um, we're gonna be starting off with a sheet that looks very similar to the one that we left the last video off on. And that's on purpose because I just wanna show you how you can easily modify that sheet so that we can kind of create something um, that works for a different purpose. So. As I alluded to in the intro, we're gonna create a report now that basically takes our fitness data here on the left and we can pull out a report um, from an all time value. So from all of the um, different values that we might have in this table and we can pull out the top 25, the top five, the top 10 or all of the values and just rank them in order um, in order to kind of take a look at what we're doing. And this is gonna be pretty useful if you have large databases of fitness testing and you just want to create a way to look at historical fitness testing data and see kind of who was the fastest or who was the strongest or kind of any number of metrics that you might want to um, look at. Some of the things that we're going to start with is we have our table up here on the left and then um, I have a reference um, section here where we're going to pull out some different values that we might use to do different um, functions in our formulas and I've actually already gone ahead and added three more columns here because we're going to have to add three more different values in there and then underneath where we finished off last time I've just added another box <clears throat> that has number of records in it and in here we're just going to be able to type in how many of the records we actually want to pull out for our formulas so that over here on the right side, um, we can basically just get everything um, pulled out based on whatever we decide to look at. Okay, so to get started, we're gonna have to do a couple different things. Number one, I wanna make sure that my output boxes are all set up properly. So I wanna pull out the athlete name, the date that the test happened on, and then the test, but I want the test to be linked to the test that I choose. So all I've done is just put an equal sign there and made it equal to this cell here so that whenever I change the test here, it's going to actually change the test that shows over here on the right. And then just to confirm that things are working properly, I wanna actually pull out the rank. And then I've also added another box here that just has numbers one to 25 so that we can confirm that when we type in that I want 25 records that it's pulling out 25 or if we type in 10 that it's pulling out 10 etc. The rank is something that we're going to do and we're going to rank our values one to whatever depending on whether we want them the highest value to be ranked the highest or the lowest value to be ranked the lowest and that's a formula that already exists in Excel. And then just as a reminder of what we did last week we have um, a box here that basically gives us a negative one value if we've selected high to low. And if we've selected low to high, it gives us a one value. And that's used in our sorting functions that we're gonna be using moving forward. So the new references that I'm gonna need is I'm gonna need an all values. And what this is gonna do is pull out all of the test values from whatever test that I choose. And that's gonna allow me to go through them and just pull out or sorry, and just rank them from one to however many values that there are. And then I'm gonna need um, rank, and then I'm gonna need a sorted rank. So those are sort of the three reference cells that I'm gonna need to use here. So the first one that we're gonna do 
is we're gonna do the all values formula. And this is easy, it's just an easy filter formula. So we're just gonna use the filter like we did in the last video. So it's just equals filter and then the array that I wanna look at is actually the table, or sorry, the table column for the test that I pull out. So we have to use that indirect function again. So it looks like this, indirect, and then open up bracket. And the reference text that we want is actually going to be in quotations and it's gonna be table data, TBL, D-A-T-A. And that's because I've already named my table um, TBL data. And then because we're referencing something in a table, we need to use a square bracket. And I'm actually gonna use a quotation mark because that's all of the, um, the wording that I want to put in quotation marks. And then I have to add something to that. So I'm gonna put the and symbol and then where I've stored my test. And as long as my test names are representative of the columns in the table, this will work. And then I need to add something else to it. So I'm gonna put an in, a quotation, another square bracket to close that off and a quotation. And then I'm gonna put all of that inside of my bracket. And so what that's telling um, filter function is I wanna look at the table data with the header that is corresponding to R5, which is in this case squat. So when we filter this out, it should pull out all of the squat values. So that's the array that I wanna look at. And then comma, the ones that I want to include are just any of the ones that have a date because I want all of them. So table data. And when I open up the square brackets, it's gonna give me some options and I want all of the ones with a date, so I'm just gonna put the date in there. And then I should be able to close that off, and when I hit enter, it's gonna give me all of the squat values. And you can see that all the way down, it's kind of um, changed the formatting, but that's okay. I can just use the formatting button and put it back in the middle of this cell. And we'll reference that this is working because if I was to pull out, say, number trial, it should give me the numbers one through 25. So that works really well. Um, now we're going to put it back on squats. So then the next thing that I wanna actually do is because I wanna pull out a ranked list and I want to be able to put things in order over here, I need to rank these values from one to whatever. So I'm gonna use a function called rank. So it's gonna be equals um, rank and then open up a bracket. And the number that I wanna look at is in this case, M5, so I'm gonna click that cell, but I wanna look at this whole array. So I'm gonna add um, a hashtag there. So now that says that it want, I wanted to look at the whole array, and then the reference that I want it to use is that same cell in the actual, or sorry, that same column in the actual table. So I want it to look at M5, which is the all the squat values, but I want it to look at the squat column in the table and I want it to rank it based on that. So I'm gonna use that indirect function again, indirect, open it up, table data, um, but I need the quotation marks. And then square bracket quotation and this value here and um, quotation, square bracket, quotation. And then I'm going to lock this cell in because I don't want it to change. So I just click on it and I hit F4. It's gonna put dollar, sign, dollar signs around it. And then what I need to do is close that bracket off. And then comma, what I need it to, what I need to tell it is whether I want it ascending or descending. So do I want it going from top to, or high to low, or low to high? So I'm gonna actually add a cell here that says that. So um, I'll put it right underneath this other one because we could use the one from the sort function, but that uses a one and a minus one. In the rank function, what you'll notice is it uses a zero and a one. So we're gonna have to create a little function that tells us whether we want that, but I'll put it right under here. So I'm gonna reference that cell, lock that in, and then close this off and hit enter and it's gonna give me a ranked value 
I'm going to just center all of those. It's going to give me a ranked value, but right now we don't have a, it's going to say that this cell is a zero. But remember, if we look at the ascending or descending, if I take this value back out, zero is descending, so high to low, and low, or sorry, one is ascending, so low to high. So I need to create a little function over here that does that. So I'll put it back on this cell here. So what we want to do is this same function here, if we copy this, if R6 is equal to high to low, we want minus one. Otherwise, we want um, a one for low to high. So we can keep this same function. And I'm just going to paste that in here. And instead, I want now a zero and a one. And I'll hit OK. And in this case, it's giving me a zero. But if I was to change this to low to high, it's going to change that. And you can see all the ranks change accordingly. So let's see if that's working. The low value is 101. And that looks like it's going to work. But we can check it with our number trial. And then see, it says low value is 1. And that's the rank 1. But if we went high to low, it's going to make that the lowest. Or sorry, it's going to make that the highest rank, whereas the 25 is the lowest rank. But now you can see when we've done that, it's going to give us a bunch of errors here. So it can't rank zero. So what we want to do is I'm going to wrap this in an if error formula that just makes this um, show nothing if there is a zero here or no value to rank. So what I'm going to do here is go back to the top and where it says rank, I'm just going to put if error and then bracket and then a comma at the end and it's going to ask me what the value is if there's an error. I put double quotation marks which means nothing. So what we've done here is we've gone if error, and then inside of that it asks me what the value is. That's the rank formula that we want. But if there is an error, I want it to be a nothing. And I'll hit enter. And now you can see it's taken all those NAs away. Okay? So that's an easy way to do that. Now, in order to set this up properly is I want to put the rank function in the actual table. So if I click at the top of the table here on the left and hit insert, and then table columns to the left. I'm going to call this table column rank. Actually, I'm going to undo that because it's screwed up the formatting. So I'm actually going to insert a whole column. So I'm going to go up here if I go on D and put insert. Instead of just inserting a column or sorry, a table column, it's inserted a whole column and pushed everything over so that all my formatting stays the same. But nonetheless, I'm going to call this rank and hit OK. And I want to pull all of these ranks into the table. So I'm going to use a little function. And if I just go to the top one here and put equals and then select the top rank and hit enter, you can see that it's going to do that all the way down. And I'm just going to change this back to general because I want it to be the numbers. Okay, so it's actually going to pull that all the way down. And then if we change this, you'll notice that it's actually going to put all the ranks in our table. Okay, so this formula is going to reference all of the ranks that we've already done in our reference formulas. So that's good. And then the last one we need to do is actually create a sort rank. So what we want it to do is only rank based on the, um, the number of values that we have in the number of records. So we're gonna use a value here and what we're gonna put is equals <clears throat> filter table data and then rank. Close that off and then what I want it to do is actually um, filter out the ones, table data, rank, that are less than or equal to the number of records that we actually have. And then if I close that in a bracket, comma, close it all off, hit OK. It's going to give me a calc error, but if I put 1 in here, you can see it's going to pull out the number 1. If I put 10, it's going to pull out all of the values underneath 10. And what you'll see here is it's given two 10s, but what that means is that we have two values that match. So there's in, in the rank, there's actually two values that are the same. So instead of going um, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sometimes it will go um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, and then the next value would be twelve. So it takes the place of say eleven. So the less than or equals function will still work if we had twenty-five. What you'll see is it's pulling out all of the numbers below 25. So I'm gonna go all the way down again and I'm just gonna center these so it looks better. And then I have to actually create a named range out of this because I'm gonna use this value to sort by. So to create a named range, I'll just click at the top and go formulas, name manager, and then put new. And I'm gonna call this um, sort rank. And then because I want it to refer to the whole formula, if I just scroll right to the end here where it's giving me the cell reference, if I put a hashtag there, hold on, I can get there. Do it this way. If I put a hashtag there, it's gonna refer to the whole spilled array and hit okay, close. So the way that I can tell if that's working, if I was to put equal sort rank, it's gonna give me that whole array. So that's an easy way to check if your named ranges are working. And so now we have all the pieces kind of created to create this, um, this list over here of sorted values. We have all the values being pulled out that we can reference. We have the rank of every value, and then we have the ranks of the number of values that we can correspond um, based on how many we've actually selected to the values that we have in our um, table. So the next thing we wanna do is actually create some formulas now where we can pull out the values into this table here based on all of our selections. And this is gonna be pretty easy now that we have everything set up. So just in the same way we did with the last value or with the last video, what we're gonna do is use the filter function to just pull out the values that we want based on the criteria that we have. So in the first one for athlete name, I'm gonna put equals filter, open that up and I know that I'm gonna to wanna to pull out the table athlete name. So I'm gonna put table data, open that up, athlete name. Close that off. So I know that we want athlete names, so that's what we're gonna filter out. And then I can put comma, and I wanna include all of the ones. So open that up, table data, and I wanna include all of the ones with a rank that is less than or equal to the value or the number of ranks that we wanna pull out. So this cell here, lock that in with an F4 because I'm gonna be referencing that over and over and then close that off. I can put a comma and then close that function. So you can see that we've pulled out 25 values but because we have um, two values that match, it's gonna just pull out 26 total but if we were to put in 10, you can see that I'll put in, it. remember we have two tens, so if we put in nine, you can see that I'll pull out nine values. So it's always gonna pull out the number that you um, type in here, just it might sometimes pull out one more or a couple more if there are matching values. So if we have two where the value is the same, it will pull out both of those because those are both the same rank, okay? So I hope that makes sense. Basically, if there are two values that are ranked the same, it's gonna pull both of them out and it counts as kind of one because we're pulling these out by the rank that they have. So now I'm gonna do, I wanna pull out 10 values, etc. So that's how we start to create that. And the next thing you'll notice is that although we now can pull these values out, they're not sorted really in any type of um, order. So if you notice, they, they actually do correspond to these ranks. So Athlete 2 is actually ranked 8 um, according to our criteria and Athlete 24 is actually ranked 9th and ideally we want those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 so that we can put them in the order that we want. So similar to what we did in the last video, um, we're going to use a function called sort by. So I'm going to wrap this whole function in a sort by or this whole formula in a sort by function. So I'm gonna go up to the top one here and right in the um, fill on the um, formula bar, I'm gonna type in sort by 
bracket and it's gonna ask me what the array is and this is the array that I want all of this filtered data that's the the um, the formula that I, or the um, the group of values that I want and then at the end I'm gonna put a comma and it's gonna ask me what array do I want to sort it by so I want to sort it by that sort rank name that we have from before so I'm gonna put in here sort rank and double click there and then it's going to ask me how I want to sort it. And if you remember, the sort by function uses um, a one or a minus one for ascending or descending. And I always want the um, the number one value to be in the top slot here and the number or the highest value to be in the bottom slot. So I'm going to use an ascending. So right here, I can just choose one and then close that off and hit enter. And what you'll notice is um, that these now become sorted. So number two would actually be ranked um, num would actually be ranked one, um, and so on and so forth. So that's kind of how we go and do that. Um, so if you see athlete two is ranked one, um, athlete fourteen. If we go to where athlete fourteen is, they're going to have the rank two, etc. And if we were to change this, and we were actually interested in low to high. It changes how the ranking works and you'll see athlete 11 has the rank of one um, athlete 11 again has the rank of two so you'll see two records from athlete 11 then 15 17 all the way through so that's how you do that for um, to sort it to make sure that everything's in the right order and then now it's just as simple as copying this formula so I'm just gonna select this whole formula and hit control C um, and then I'm gonna paste it in here control V and instead of the athlete names, I actually want to pull out the date. So I just type date in there and then go to the end of the formula, hit enter, and it's going to give me all the dates and then copy and paste it again. And instead of athlete name, I want to pull out the test that we're actually referencing. So how we do that, if you remember from the other formulas, we have this indirect function. So I can easily just copy this out, control C. And then where it's actually asking me what table I want, I can just paste that indirect function right in there, control V. And as long as that's all good, well, it's telling me I, I messed something up somewhere. One sec. Oh, I forgot my filter, that's why. So if I close that, if I uh, put my filter back in there, I accidentally pasted it over top of where the filter was. If I hit enter, you can see it's gonna pull out all the values. And then I can use this formula one more time control C and then I'll just paste that in there and instead now I want to pull out the rank so I just type in rank there and I hit OK and it's gonna give me the ranks and I'm just gonna make all of these centered so that they look nice and there you go so that was an easy way we just put that same formula we just copied and pasted it over a couple times because we're we're using the same um, method we're just pulling out a di we're just filtering a different column out of the um, the, the table that we use to store all of our data. So I'm going to try and make sure this works. So let's pick the number trial. So number trial, we want 10 athletes. So we have athlete one through 10. We have the numbers one through 10 and then the rank one through 10. But if I make the high one, the most important, we have athletes 25 through 16 and the number that is associated 25 through 16 and rank one. And if we put all 25 athletes in there, we should see 25 all the way down to number one, but if we switch the order, we should see one all the way down to 25. So that's a simple way that you can create an all-time ranked um, table, I guess, where you pull out your values based on how many you wanna see, and it's really flexible. If we add more data in, let's say we wanna add John Smith and 2020, 06, 01, and they, uh, for 10 meter dash, they ran a blistering 0.55. So that's obviously gonna be the fastest one. And then we make the 10 meter dash important and we want low to high. John Smith's gonna pop their way right there to the top with their blistering 10 meter dash of 0.55. So you can see it will work as, lo as long as the um, everything matches and you just keep adding more data, you'll be able to have a completely updated list um, overall. So. I hope that that um, video helps you out. Um, this this video as well was in response to a question that I got on Twitter. So if you have any questions, 
feel free to reach out to me there and I'll see if I can't create a video that solves your problem. And hopefully it's solving the problem of a lot of other coaches too. If you want to follow me, just a reminder, you can find me at DSM Strength. I'll type that in here on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all of that. Um, and you can reach out to me there and ask questions and, and hopefully I can help you out a little bit um, when I, if I have a chance. And then also if you want to support the channel, a lot of these spreadsheets are actually for sale on my website at dsmstrength.com. There'll be links to those in the description below and there's some links to my favorite resources and books um, via Amazon and if you purchase through those, um, I get a small kickback which helps me carve out the time to be able to put these videos together um, for you guys to kind of view for free. Uh, quick reminder, please subscribe and like to the channel and if you could share this with somebody you know, that would be really helpful. So until the next video, um, good luck with all of your Excel um, tricks and, and tips. Thanks.